Hi everyone and welcome back to the Learning FreeCAD for Beginners where we're teaching the fundamentals of FreeCAD with practical examples whilst we learn workflows. In this example, we're going to be using a part design clone workflow. Now this allows me to create a template body and then create clones from that template body to add additional geometry on. We're gonna be taking you through these workflows and some of the pitfalls that you may counter when using this workflow. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So for this workflow, we're going to be using the part design. And we're going to be using the clone workflow. So this icon here. First of all, we need something to clone. So this is going to be our base body that we're going to create a number of other bodies off of that are slightly different. It's almost like a template. So we're going to create a body and then create a sketch. Now I'm going to create a simple hinge. And I'm going to start on the X Z plane. And I'm going to create a circle. So I'm going to start with a circle, got the auto constraints on, and we're going to constrain this to the center point here. Let's get some dimensions in here. So I'm going to set this dimension to 10 millimeters. So we've got the first part. Now I'm going to create a line that attaches to this circle. So I'm going to create a line and attach that to the circle and bring this out, make sure it's straight. Now we've got that one there, let's put some tangency. We're taking this line and this circle and make those tangent to each other. Hit OK. So we've got this coming along here and curving up like so. Now let's use the polyline. And I'm going to take this point, come up, connect up to this horizontal line, come across and connect up to the circle. So we've got that one there. Let's hit escape. And I see I'm missing some vertical constraint. So we'll add that one in. Place some length. And we're going to go 30 millimeters on that one. Now let's remove some geometry from in here. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to use the trim edge. Also available from sketch, sketch geometries, and you'll find the trim edge there. I'm going to trim away this edge in here. We can see everything is constrained down and that's important because sometimes trim edges will result in the coincident constraint being removed. So if any of this is white, then you know it's not fully constrained. Let's close that. Now we've got our base sketch. Let's come over to the model, make sure that sketch is selected and we're gonna pad that. I'm gonna make it symmetrical to plane. I'm going to pad this forwards around about 40 millimeters. So we've got the starts of our hinge here. I'm now going to make a separation around about halfway from this part and remove this part, but leaving a space in here to allow the hinge to rotate. So we're creating the blank first. So first of all, we'll make a sketch on this face New sketch. Now we don't need to reference the external geometry because we've got this point in here. So we've built this around this center point. So when we rotate this, it's actually rotate around the right part as well. So I'm going to create a circle and this is going to be pocket. So we're going to pocket away some of this material. So we've got that circle in there. Let's pull in some of this external geometry because I'm actually going to use a measurement in here. So I'm going to measure from this point to this circle. So we're going to need a point on this circle. So using this point, attach it to the circle. And also I'm going to attach that point and I can use this line here or I can just bring this down actually and bring it down to this one so it's out of the way. So I take this point and this vertical line 
and place a point on line constraint. Therefore, I can take this point and this point and place a gap in there of about a millimetre. So we've got that in there. If I close that and pocket that, you can see they're starting to take away material here. So this will allow the other hinge to attach and have some space in here to, to allow it to rotate. Now this is 40 millimeters, I believe. So I set this to 20, so half of that. So we've got that there. We could hook this up with a function if we wanted to. So we could go to this pad, as you can see, length 40 there, and we can reference that rather than putting 20, we could place pad, then dot length, and divide that by two, so you get 20. So that's always there. That's okay, that. So we've got our first part of our hinge. You notice that the attachment will need basically a male and female in here. So we're going to need a hole or a pocket that pockets all the way through here, leaving some gap. And then on the other one, we're going to need a pad that comes out. So they slot together. And this is where this workflow comes in handy. Because we've created a blank, we can take that body. And what I'm going to do is rename that. And we call this hinge template body. When we click on that body, we get the clone tool available. So create a clone or part design, create a clone. The clone has been created as a separate body here, which we can right click and transform. I'm going to place this out of the way here. I'm now going to build upon this clone. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this face and place a sketch upon it. Now you can see it's asking me to make an independent copy, make a dependent copy. The reason why, if I cancel out that, you notice that the hinge template here is highlighted in bold. That means that's the active body. To add a sketch to this body, we need to click on it and make it active. So right click, toggle active body. Double clicking also does this, or if we Double click this one, you can see that's bold and active. If I double click that body, then this one's active. Now we can click on that face and create a sketch. On that face now, and I'm going to come in, I'm going to create a circle on here and come out. And this is going to be the female section of the hinge. Hit escape, take that circle and set some diameter. And that set that to something like seven millimeters. So we've got that one there. And close that. And now we can take that sketch and pocket that into this section. Now I can set this up with a formula again. I can go back to the original model, or we can just decide how deep we want to go with this pocket. We know 20 millimeters is the size of this. So if we go around about 15 millimeters and hit OK, and then we've got that hole in there with that pocket in there. And we can use that 15 millimeters against the pad of the other clone. So we've got our first one in there. Let's do our next one. So taking this body again, this clone, make sure you pick the body and not the pocket because you can actually clone at different parts. And that does come in handy if you want to take your model as a template from different sections. So you may want to take, say this, this may have a drilling pattern on top of here, but you may want to take the original pad or the original pocket, this one, which will be before the drilling pattern. So for instance, I can take this pad here this one here and make a clone and you'll see this clone has been created if I right click and transform that out the way you can see we've got a clone of that pad so that one there 
I don't want that, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to make sure that pocket has been shown. I'm going to take this hinge and again clone it. We now got the second body. Let's right click, transform, and come out. Well, this is the second clone. You can see the rotation we got on there is rotating around that center point. And let's bring this out. That's okay that. And now what we do is take this face once again, new sketch, remember to make sure it's active. So come to the last body we've cloned, double click it. That's now highlighted in bold. Select that face, new sketch. So we're sketching upon that face now. And this time, let's place a circle in here to connect out to this center point. Come out and we'll take that circle and set some dimensions or diameter. Let's go one millimeter less, so six millimeters. So this was seven millimeters, this is six. We'll close that and then we'll take the pad and pad this up to 15 mil. So we've got that one in there. If we wanted to, what we can do is actually come in and pocket all the way through here and make this bigger coming out. We've got that option, but I'm just going to leave it like that. So now we've got the template and two clones. And this is the female hinge. And this was a clone. And then we've got the male. So we've got those. Now watch what happens if we change this clone. So I'm going to keep away from this part here. And I'm going to add a drilling pan onto this face. So click that face, add a new sketch. Remember that we've got to come back and double click on that body. Now we can add the sketch. So let's flip this around. And what we can do now is add the drilling pattern. So for instance, let's bring in some of these edges. I'm going to bring in the top line and the bottom line and create some circles in here, which I'm going to pocket through. So I'm going to create some number of circles, I'll create four and hit in escape, click on the top, make sure these two are in line. And the same for the other two, this one and this one. And make sure we've got vertical constraints against this one and this one. And the same between this one and this one. So I've clicked that first because I had four to do. So, so four clicks to actually get these in line. They're in line now, so we can create some distance between these two. So five, and we'll go five from here as well. And the same for this one, this point and this point. So five millimeters. And finally this one and this one, five mil. And we'll take all these and put a radius on here. So I've selected them all and then add in the radius. That'll make them all equal. And we'll set the radius to four millimeters. So we've got a sketch at the moment. Now watch what happens when I pocket that sketch. It will apply it to all the others. Let's go through all. And hit OK. So now added that to all those. So we've added a drilling pattern. Now, a word of warning about topological naming issues is that, let's say if we take this face and add a fillet to here, you can see what's happened. We've got some problems. Because we've affected the number of faces on here, we've actually added to here, then we've got problems with all of the pockets and 
the pads they've been attached to what was that original face but it's now moved because we've added faces and edges into the mix so we just have to be wary of that let's cancel that because I added a sketch up on here and created say another circle in here that's not going to affect the face makeup on where I've placed the sketch so if I place a hole through that we can see we're okay so we just have to be very careful of where we place that but for quick simple parts such as this then this workflow is quite handy because it's quick it's to the point and you can get your work done quite quickly so I hope you enjoyed that workflow it may be useful for small parts that you want to create and you just want something like a very simple blank that you're going to use multiple times to create your models thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you again soon if you like what you've seen please subscribe to the site i also have a ko-fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0 i also run a patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.